not not until he started. There we go. We good? All right, let's go. Well, welcome, Mo Shape. How are you? I hope you're having a great summer. My name's Guy Anhoff, and I got to tell you, this is our back to school town hall, and uh, just want to let you know that. Uh, we got some really exciting things to go over tonight, and uh, we're going to be joined with our president, uh, Dr. Patrick Fine. We also have our past president, Dr. Docheff, with us, and our executive director, Tom Lowry. And we're going to kick it off with something fun. So if you could, if you could go to the, the uh, chat, and if you could create a hashtag that summarizes your summer, please enter it into the chat. So if you could come up with a hashtag that summarizes your summer, go ahead and put it in the chat. It's had a little fun. Too fast, way too fast. Oh, wow, I love those. Whirlwind, busy, 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 over too fast. Too busy teaching classes. Spoken like, spoken like a true teacher. Brad with the waves. All right. Need break for my break. Been there before. Well, thanks for doing that. So what we'd like to do is just to find out, you know, who's with us from our MoShape uh, membership. And Brad, why don't you turn it over to the uh, Zoom poll questions? Can I get a thumbs up if you can see the Zoom poll? Thank you. Just six questions. Should be short and sweet, but this will allow um, those that are facilitating and MoShape leadership get a better understanding of who's here tonight. Thank you. Brad, nothing happens when I click submit. I think you've got to scroll down a little bit and see all the questions oh. and it'll pop up. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those who have submitted. We're about halfway, a little over 58%. Give you about 30 more seconds. This is like watching a uh, presidential election results come in. <laughs> 21 of 24 have been reported. That's from the Western District. Otherwise, our Kansas City uh, folks. Just waiting for a couple states. <laughs> We're down to the counties. All right, I'm gonna let you give it a couple more seconds to hit submit if you want your answer to be included in the poll. Now I'm gonna hit share results so you can also see who is here. All right, so I'm gonna hit share results. Can I get a thumbs up if you can see the results? Okay, good. So we've got 52% of attendees as serving as a PE teacher, um, three health teachers on the Zoom, one health and PE teacher combo, six administrators. Um, we have a pretty good spread of levels served, which is great to have some diversity here on levels that we serve. Let's see, years of service. We have five educators on here with 30 plus years of service. Can we get like a, uh, can we get like a hand up if you're one of those five educators? Yeah. Congratulations. Hey. That's a lot of, that's a that's lot of, that's a mic of drop. Guy, how many years is that all together? A lot. I need a calculator. <laughs> and let's see. <laughs> we had 12 teachers that were able to use the Mo Ready resource. We'll dive into that a little bit later. Um, and some who, what is the Mo Ready Teacher resource? So you'll get to learn what that resource is here in a little bit. Um, Patrick, we've got 11 people registered. 
Um, six people who hope to register after receiving approval. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. And then district allowing travel. We have 24% that is allowing three or 14% that's not allowing and a big bulk is I don't know. And then that's the same category that I'm in as well. So hopefully that helps our leadership kind of um, move forward with some planning and just some facilitation of this meeting. So thanks for completing that poll. And Guy, I'm going to kick it back to you, sir. All right. Well, I think it's no surprise that right now, you know, heading into the school year, there's still some uncertainty due to the Delta variant. And so one of the things that we talked about um, as a leadership team, and that is to bring back the Mo, the Mo Ready resource. And for those of you who don't know what that is, I'm going to bring on now Sally uh, Schulte and Brad Brummel to talk about this resource that they made with Patrick a year ago. And all I can tell you is a year ago when we first launched it, or they first launched it, uh, there was nearly 3,000 educators from across the country that have utilized this resource. So with that, I'll kick it over to you, Sally, to kick things off. All right, hi all, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Sally Schulte, I'm in the Rockwood School District. I'm a coordinator for um, HPE, so I'm happy to be here with all of you. And just wanted to give you some background information and to remind you or inform you of this resource. We are across the straight state, excuse me, trying to get our students back into the buildings. What that looks like for you might be vastly different than people down the street. So I know in the St. Louis County and city area, we are going back masked, but we are going to have our students in seats, which is awesome. For other counties um, around the state, it might be mask optional, whatever situation you're going back to. Um, this resource was created last year, knowing that we would have some students in buildings, some students virtual, some students in the classroom, some students in spaces that we didn't know could be used for PE. So um, very quickly, I'm gonna go over this just so you know, it was created by teachers from all across the state. It's got some really great stuff in there. Um, we have buckets down at the bottom on this resource, which I will link in the chat here in just a moment. Um, but the, I can't see it, Brad, can you scroll up? Oh, there it is, okay. So we have classroom as one tab and there's a bunch of activities there from K through 12 for classroom type activities that you can do in a smaller space. We have no equipment. Um, those activities literally don't need anything except some space. And then we have ones that have little to no equipment. We know that sanitization will still be uh, utilized in a lot of the districts across the state this year as well. So that would be a good one to check out. The guidance, a lot of the guidance is still very similar to what we had last year. Some things that have changed, we will update for you. This is a dynamic document. And then there's also resources, just general resources for you. There's some great YouTube playlists and some really awesome things that people have put out and continue to put out that are linked in there. And we also have the SEL resources. So I will link um, this resource and I will also link another resource, which Brad and I are going to chat about here in a second for you in the chat in just a moment, but just so you know, these resources are on DESE. They are linked on um, Mo Healthy Schools and on Mo Shape. Yeah, Brad, so I, wanna, I, oh, would just, I would just add that if you were a district that was mostly virtual last year, you, you probably didn't dive into this resource um, or your colleagues did not dive into this resource. Um, schools that were holding in-person options for learning, um, might have had might have explored and found and, and used this resource maybe not but feel free to help us share this out because unfortunately we, we were hoping not to have to use this resource again but here we are so help us share this with colleagues because this is a resource that hopefully will save time and help find some uh, learning activities that are easy engaging um, created by teachers for teachers so and then Sally did you want to touch on the fitness testing resource? Yeah, and jump in whenever you need to, Brad. So this next one was created by a couple of us um, to really target those kiddos who are at home. So I know across the state, we still have a lot of students who are going to be virtual, and this will really help you with that at-home fitness testing. Um, it gives you lots of different ideas to use. It gives you links to videos. You pretty much just click on the link, copy and paste it, put it into whatever learning management system you have. And all of these resources are here for you. The Brock board is also included for your adapted students. 
Um, we got some really good feedback about this resource last year, and a lot of teachers were able to utilize pretty much all of it. So anything you would need that comes with fitness testing or for fitness testing, this is the resource for you. And I will also put this in the chat here in just a few minutes. Brad, do you have anything else to add on this one? No, just that it can, I think it can also benefit teachers that are in person as well. Um, it's a, if, even if you're in person, there may be some fitness gram resources that maybe you haven't used before, whether it's projector visuals, whether it's um, maybe a resource to send home with students, or it could be that you're, maybe you don't have the same amount of time that you're used to. And so you're prioritizing your time at school um, for other things and you want your students to do some at-home testing, or maybe you have students that feel more comfortable taking the test at home. Um, so just use this to your benefit. <clears throat> it should be really easy to use. And again, share with your colleagues. So, um, Patrick, Dr. Fine, you helped create this resource. Is there anything you'd like to add to either one of these resources, both resources you had a big hand in? Nope, I think you guys covered all of it. I mean, it's, it is a great resource. I can't tell you how many teachers this past year have asked me uh, for different resources that were included in these documents. So it's great, even though you might not think you're going to use it at the beginning of the year, uh, have it available and have it in a place to where you can access it. Excellent. Re Go ahead, reminders Sally. To, yeah, reminders as well. This one will also be located on Desi and MoShape and Mo Healthy Schools. So there's multiple places to find it, but I'm going to link them in the chat for all of you too. All right. So our next, and, and I don't know if we've mentioned it so far, but we will be keeping track of the chat. So if you have questions, feel free to throw them at the chat and we will either answer them as we go or we will take some time at the end to make sure we've been able to answer your questions. So please feel free to do that. Um, but our next agenda item is to um, let Dr. Patrick Fine speak a little bit on our upcoming in-person conference in November. So Patrick, level up. Thanks, Brad. Uh, no, we are excited this year that we're gonna be in person. Uh, the convention, as usual, is going to be in November, from November 12th through the 14th. It's at the uh, Lodge of Four Seasons in the Lake of the Ozarks. And you hear people say level up all the time, or at least recently, uh, that is the theme this year, is level up. Sometime between now and the convention, I'll, uh, I'll come on and I'll go a little bit more in detail about what level up really means. But a couple of the highlights, I'm not going to be able to go into a whole lot of detail on it, but I just want to highlight three things uh, about the convention. We have uh, some awesome sessions that are already committed to. I'm not going to list any names of people because there's so many people that have committed to do sessions that I really don't want to leave anybody out. But we do have some pre-convention sessions, one from Gopher, one on uh, first aid to get certified another one on skills-based health, and then Ply Yoga is coming back again this year. There's gonna be a session by uh, Open Phys Ed. They're bringing in a trainer. We're gonna to have toys they're gonna to be presenting. And I'm sure there's gonna be a whole lot more sessions on SEL and skills-based health. But, uh, you know, I have people ask me, is it too late to submit proposals? And it is not too late. You can go to moshape.org. You can submit a proposal there. And uh, really, I. I encourage you to find something that you're excited about, that you're passionate about. Uh, I'm sure there'll be people that do things on SEL. You can find things on assessment, on uh, standards-based grading, classroom management, skills-based health. Pick a unit that you're excited about or activities that you're excited about. Partner up with somebody and do something together. That's sometimes a really fun thing to do is do it with another, uh, another colleague. Uh, also, the, uh, the decision to go, uh, it's come up where you don't know whether your district is going to allow you to go or not. Just make the decision to go. You may not be able to go for the entire time. You might not be able to go for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but you can still go for Saturday if you can't get out of school for some reason uh, to, get, to go down there on Friday. But it's worth finding the time and making the commitment to be there It'll be worth it, even if you're only able to make it for a short time. And I will tell you, the last thing is we have uh, the president-elect nominations that are coming up. And I believe something is going to be put out tomorrow that if you yourself are interested in uh, 
uh, nominating yourself for president elect or nominating somebody else, not uh, get that information to uh, Dennis Docheff. And there'll be something going out tomorrow, I think through social media, but hope to see you in November. Thank you very much, Patrick. And I am subbing for a guy because his computer crashed. Hey, Tom. And so he's not able to continue this. Yes. I have a question for Patrick regarding the convention or a comment. He mentioned maybe people pairing up to present. I would encourage people who are more experienced to ask a less experienced person to present with you because there may be people who really want to, but they're either intimidated or they've never done it before, or they're afraid to, and all they need is a little push and then we got a new star. So I would encourage people to invite people to present with them. Uh, that's a great comment, Dennis. And presenting at a conference or convention is no more than teaching a class. And that's what you do every day. Uh, you've got the confidence to be in front of a group. Uh, one of the things that we find in conventions is that not all the time do the attendees agree with the presenter, but that then opens up further discussions to find out why a position is taken and uh, how something else can be considered. So it's a, it's a growth process. And so uh, the collaboration is very, very effective. And I will just make one small comment here before we turn it over to the, uh, the keynoters here tonight. Uh, those of you that had the opportunity to go to Kentucky, to Louisville a few weeks ago, uh, we had so many Missouri presenters and Drew was one that was um, uh, very prominent and it was all very comfortable, relaxing, and so, again, make sure that you go to moshape.org, fill out the convention presentation proposal. Patrick will review it with his committee and be making the decision. So we're looking for a, a varied uh, group of topics. And I think that would do well. But I don't want to speak anymore because I want to talk it, turn it over to uh, Dr. Kim uh, Goforth and Brad Brummel. Uh, Kim is the coordinator uh, for health and PE in the uh, Columbia uh, Public Schools. Brad is the coordinator of health and physical education in the Springfield School District. And so they have been uh, extremely busy this spring and early summer creating documents that will be a part of our YouTube li library. So Brad and Kim, why don't you go with it and uh, share your screens and let people know why they're here tonight. Okay, great. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everybody. Um, like Tom said, Kim Goforth, um, Julie Lukenhoff probably would have remembered me as Kim Schieber back in the day. Um, Dr. Fine mentioned um, some of the pre-conference sessions and Brad and I are fortunate enough to be doing one of those this year surrounding skills-based health education. Um, and it's funny that I see Julie here. Some of you that do know me, know that I took a jump out of K-12 health and PE for a few years, came back into the instructional coaching world, um, all subjects, and then last year, COVID year, um, jumped into this role here in Columbia. And I remember like, yes, I'm so excited to get back into the health education, that was my jam. And I'm like, the 2007 standards are still what we're using. Um, and I remember back at the lodge, um, working on those with Julie, um, so we've needed to take a focus on health education for a little bit now. Um, anyone feel like those are maybe outdated? Maybe? Thumbs up if you, yeah, right. So as we look at the world, uh, last year, health and fitness really came to the forefront for a lot of districts. And I know for us here in Columbia, um, not just talking about the mental and emotional health of folks, but um, disease at its very root. Um, and so as we looked at our standards, uh, Brad and I were um, had the awesome opportunity to engage with some skills-based health education um, trainings. And um, we're super pumped to help support teachers um, making some shifts in their curriculum that is much needed um, here in our state and really the states around us. Um, Brad, talk to us a little bit um, or share our journey, like what got us here. Um, and then we'll talk about the things that are um, coming forward. 
Sure. So one one benefit of last year was kind of the shift in professional learning, the shift in how we collaborate. And I know that I'm very thankful to uh, have been able to collaborate and work with several leaders on this Zoom um, with that shift. But one one major shift was um, Desi and Missouri Healthy Schools and MoShape provided professional learning opportunities um, for some leaders in MoShape that were available to attend during the day. And so me and Kim took advantage of that opportunity um, RMC Health was the provider of a lot of the um, professional learning opportunities that we went to. Um, I believe we went to a little over 50 hours of skills-based health professional learning. And so we, as we were attending, we knew that we were going to try to organize and repurpose our learning so that we could serve not only teachers in our districts, but also teachers in Missouri. And so after attending the professional learning, we decided we wanted to put together a, a video series. Um, this will be housed on MoShape's YouTube playlist. And we're gonna go into the video series. There's three, three mini series. Um, we're, Kim will go into those here in just a little bit. But what we, what we wanted to do was make it so that an educator could go through this journey on their own. So if you're in a district and you are a health teacher and you wanna learn more about skills-based health, you can do this all by yourself. The videos are organized in a way so that you can do that. And we, pr we provide training guides as well. Um, but at the same time, we also wanted districts um, that have representation or leaders over their health and PE department that could use this in an asynchronous format or synchronous format for their departments to use as learning as well. So I know that um, secondary Springfield health teachers will be watching our first two videos as part of their back to school learning. and. Uh, so it's not only a tool for educators, but also coordinators and administrators as well. Um, let me share my screen so you can see what the training guides look like. Um, these are included with each video. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can see the slide. Thank you. So these are available. You can access the link in the description of each video. Um, you can download it and use it as a digital copy, and it's a fillable PDF, or you can print it and write on it and mark it up, um, whichever way helps you with your learning. But each training guide has the objectives, has some um, reflection questions, has resources linked in. It really helps you because we've all accessed a ton of different learning materials over the last 18 months, but we really wanted something that could help guide you through the learning as well. So not only are you able to watch it, but you're able to pause the video, go reflect and apply that learning and get, get some thoughts on to help you make that shift to skills-based health. So this is what the training guide looks like. Um, Kim, would you like to talk a little bit about health skills? Yes, absolutely. So really our first, um, our first mini series um, is two videos. Um, the first one is why skills-based health education. And the second one is making the shift. And so in the why um, video, we open that up with um, kind of some self-reflection as maybe a health or a physical educator. And we ask, what are, and this is the interactive session right now, so get your chats pulled up. Um, we ask one big important question. Personally, what do you remember from your K-12 health education experience that you're very grateful for? What are you grateful that you took away from that health experience that you maybe apply in your life today? So drop a couple things in the chat for things that you received from your K-12 health education. Um, and Christy, uh, think back to our Higginsville High School health class. Um, who taught that? Was that Miss Davis? Cecile Davis. You know it on her smoke break, then she came back in, right? <laughs> yep. All right. So some things that you're very grateful for that you took away from that K-12 health experience. Brad, if you're monitoring that, or Tom. And you can see the uh, screen that I'm sharing are our eight different national health skills. So you could choose one of these, but you could also choose a different one as well. Right. And I think one question that I think was relevant when I went through the training was, um, God love her, Cecile Davis did have to take smoke break a couple of times and then come back and teach us a little bit of PE and health. And so um, I don't know if I got a lot of the health skills that I needed, um, but here's some, the second question in the training guide for this particular series is, 
what do you wish you would have walked away with your K-12 health experience? Um, we didn't have class in high school. Um, a lot of that goal setting was important. And I think the goal setting rub, if you did receive that, might have been in your PE class with the fitness testing. Um, and so also take a minute to think about, boy, that would have been handy. Um, and for me, I know that it was... Um, the whole interpersonal communication. How can I um, how can I communicate in every facet to every audience? Um, I hated public speaking even on that level. And so as we get to adulthood, what do I wish I would have taken away? Still some folks answering in the chat there, but if we really look at skills that we took away um, from our health education experience, I think that that is where Brad and I really wanted to fine tune some of our intro series. Why? Why is it important for our kids to take away these important skills and maybe a little bit less of the rote memorization, maybe of, you know, classifications of drugs? How do we apply the skills of decision making and self management and advocating for self versus just regurgitating some of the classifications of drugs, for example? And so these are the skills that the national health standards focus on. And the why is it important for students? And so in our first intro series, the why, and then if you grasp that and you're all on board, you're all in. Now, how do I take my very content heavy health education curricula that's in my district currently and marry it to these skills? How do I make that shift to implement a nice balance of the skills with the health content? And so that intro series are the two videos. And so wherever you are in your um, district or your personal health classes, or maybe you're in a PE department that you think, boy, boy I could really kick this to our health educators. Um, the why series, I think the intro series is very important to kind of ground the rest of the series um, with some of your learning. And so Brad, do you wanna talk about the next two series that we have after we kind of get the, the, the making the shift idea in our head? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So after the why and the how, um, we have two more mini series. And the first one is all about instructional strategies. These are not just for skills-based health education. These are for, and in, in, you can find these instructional strategies in any effective classroom. Um, but the great thing about these mini videos is that in each video, you're gonna find examples within the health education classroom. And we know that um, a majority of our health educators are located at the secondary level. And so we tried to focus on a lot of those examples, but I think that you can apply the examples to the elementary setting. If let's say you are a physical education teacher who is responsible for um, some health instruction as well, because we know that that happens. So you can see in this first instructional strategy series, we have six videos. You can see the different instructional st strategies in front of you here. Um, I think that the movement video and the cooperative learning video would also be great for any PE teacher especially if you sometimes get pushed into a classroom. These are two instructional strategies that you use a lot of within your gym setting as well. The second mini series is diving into the national health standards. This is an eight video, one video per standard. And this is great if you have used the state standards in the past and you're not as familiar with the national standards because in each video, we break it down to how does this standard help us meet the goals of health education? Um, what are the steps in teaching this standard? Um, what are kind of those grade band focuses and what are some examples? And the other thing that we highlight a lot in all of our video series is RMC Health. We would not be here without RMC Health. If you have not checked out their free website resources, they are um, high notch, high quality, easy to use. Um, it's not a curriculum, it's just a teacher resource. So if you have not checked that out, please do so. They are linked in all of our training guides and you can just Google RMC Health and find it very easy. Um, but again, you can see the, the different videos here. We are excited. Kim, when are these going to be available for our friends? You have to wait two days. That's it, just two days. Uh, on Wednesday, we are going to release the entire series. We're going to re-release the first two in that intro series, but then all of them are going to come out. So. Um, 
administrators or if you're in charge of the professional development that's happening coming up in August, these would be uh, great to kind of um, really fine tune for your particular district. And so Wednesday is the day for that big re-release and then full release of the rest of these. And then we're also going to host a Twitter chat on August 31st. It's a Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Um, really just to connect with each other on skills-based health and how's it going or, hey, I just am um, getting started with the party. And so we're just gonna have some open dialogue um, through that Twitter chat. Like I said, August 31st, it's a Tuesday evening. So join us for that. Um, Brad, I was kind of managing the chat. Anything yeah. jump out? So I would say that the Twitter chat is, would be impact. It would be easier to join in if you've watched a little bit of the videos, but you don't have to. So let's say you are already participating in skills-based health. You've already participated in some, some learning related to it. You don't have to have watched the videos to join us in on, on collaborating on our Twitter chat. Um, there's no Twitter police um, for skills-based health. So feel free to join us. Um, we would love to connect with you in that way. And again, the first two videos are live on MoShape YouTube playlist currently. So you can dive into those if you want to, but the health skills instructional strategies and the national health standards will be released on Wednesday. And we're excited for that. So we've left our email contact information because if you have questions as you go through this journey, we're here to help you and support you. Um, so please, if you, um, we can provide a link to the Google slideshow or our contact info if that's easier in the chat, feel free, free to reach out to us. Um, are there any questions in the chat or any, feel free to unuse your mic if there's any questions related to skills-based health at this time. Thank you, Mary. Yes, thank you, Mary. Hope to see everybody in our pre-session down at the lake. All right. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Uh, thank you both Brad and Kim. Uh, these are fabulous videos that they have put together. A lot of this was done through their work, uh, uh, the, the prep work, the uh, working with CDC and all the resources and this is a game changer. It's uh, very helpful because uh, the national health standards are being reviewed and it will be a year or two before that's really taken care of. But um, uh, we, uh, we look forward to putting these on, on the playlist. And Mary, do you want to just speak for a minute about how people can access this on our webpage? Well, I actually just put it um, in the chat. So if you are just watching this later, you can just basically Google YouTube MoShape and it will bring you to a random MoShape video and you can click on MoShape and get to the playlist. So it is all on its own playlist. So if you guys bookmark this playlist uh, in two days, they'll have a lot more videos added. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mary. Does anyone have questions or comments relating to the work of Brad and Kim? And again, this was uh, all uh, really a part of the 1801 grant uh, with DESE and the other uh, Department of Health and Senior Services contributed to the development of this as well. So this is another example of great collaboration across different associations and groups to bring this to all the teachers in, in our uh, membership and in our state. Thank you, Tom. So will you good if we move forward with member engagement, see if we can get some feedback. Is that good with you, Dr. Lowry? What, what is that, Brad? Are you good if I move forward with member engagement? Absolutely. Uh, go to the next level then, yes. Excellent. So one thing we wanted to do as a board and, and as MoShape leaders, we wanted to find out how we can better serve you as you're starting up this year. We want to help you prepare for success. Um, so one thing we wanted to spend a little bit of time tonight was to get some ideas on how we can support you. So take a moment to reflect on this question, how can MoShape support members during this school year? It could be starting the school year, it could be finishing this school year, it could be attending the conference, 
Um, this is an open-ended question. There is not a wrong answer. Um, so in just a moment, we'll use the annotate tool to fill up this slide. Um, so I'm just going to give you about 10 more seconds to reflect on this question and give you some wait, give you some think time. I'm really bad at providing think time in person, but I'm really good at Zoom because there's no one else in the room with me. So um, hopefully you have a couple ideas coming to your head. Um, if you have not used the annotate tool, you're going to click on view options right next to where it says my name and the green on the top. You'll click this annotate option on the option screen and then you'll click text and then it's gonna allow you to type right on my screen. Okay, be nice, all right? But here's where you're, you're including your ideas for how MoShape how can support our members during this school year. So again, click the view options towards the top. Click annotate. And click text. And then you'll be able to click on the screen somewhere and type in that text. If you can't figure it out, don't stress about it. You can also throw it in the chat and somebody else can throw it on the screen for you, but this will allow us to, to capture all thoughts real easily. There we go, we got some ideas coming up now, thank you. more moments. Oops, sorry about that. And if your text is somewhere where you can't see it, you should be able to move it around if that helps you to be able to see what you're typing. I like the opportunities for grants idea. And um, Moshe Board of Director members, if you have any questions about any of these ideas, feel free to ask a question at this time as our members are coming up with some ideas on how we can support them. Thanks for the stamp, Kim. I like the idea, whoever put it, opportunities uh, for grants and how to write. Um, I hear a lot of people asking about that. So it would be a real good idea to put together some kind of resource for that. Mary, that topic might be make for a good uh, video session that goes on YouTube. Yes, true. All right, if you have any other ideas, feel free to add them, but I'm going to go ahead and capture these thoughts before I forget. And I'm clear. I'm very impressed with everyone's uh, tech skills tonight. I didn't have to give any support for the annotate tool. I'm really, I'm really proud. I'm gonna stretch us here. And our next question is, we did see in the, um, on that last screen, we, there were several 
members that mentioned either collaboration or opportunities to virtually meet. Um, and so that is something that we at times as leaders, we want to create those opportunities, but there are times where we don't know exactly how our members prefer to meet or how they prefer to collaborate. So next we're going to use just the simple stamp tool and, and several of you did that with the hearts. You can choose any stamp you want to. And if you've never accessed a stamp before, you're gonna do it the same way. Click view options, click annotate, click stamp, click the one that's gonna make your heart happy and stamp when you or how you would prefer collaborating with your peers. Um, not, not specific to skills-based health, but could be anything. Um, but this kind of helps us as we plan town halls, as we plan coffee chats, this kind of helps us figure out how to, how to plan and organize our collaboration opportunities. And we know that different things work for different people, but this we, it'd be great to get a, a sense of where we're at. All right, everybody get a chance. Excellent. So at this time, if there are any questions in the chat, we not me, but we would love to help you with any of those questions um, related to anything MoShape or anything to help you get started with the back to school year. Um, any questions in the chat that you've seen so far? One one question came up, uh, Brad, from Alicia Fink, Dr. Alicia Fink. Uh -huh. uh, she works in many different districts as a dance educator, teaches at UMSL, uh, has for a number of years and has to work with many different platforms for uh, tech purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, many districts are using Canvas or some other uh, selected platform. And with uh, your expertise in working with uh, the online learning, you know, we had a great success last summer uh, or last year when we had to go to virtual learning and you and your Springfield teachers put together uh, an excellent town hall uh, showing various techniques and strategies that you use for online learning. Uh, perhaps uh, your member services committee could also consider having uh, a session or resources that, that help uh, people who uh, are still involved with learning a number of different tech systems and platforms, how to navigate and how to do things. You know, uh, what you've demonstrated here tonight is just absolutely excellent use of technology for a variety of purposes. And I think uh, the more that our members are able to do this, uh, Drew has had great success in what he puts out and he's a rock star around the country with uh, uh, the ways that he's impacted people. So this is something that maybe you can consider uh, to help elevate everybody's tech skills. Yeah, good thought. And I always advise um, teachers and coordinators that reach out to me with tech questions. One of the first things you have to do is find someone Find someone that's using the same learning management system that you're using because it's 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 challenging if you are going to support from someone who's using canvas like me in my district when you're using google classroom and so that's one of the first tips is to try to find someone that you can connect with that has and has used the same lms that you're currently using and if you have to use more than one lms i'm sorry and my thoughts and prayers are with you well, and this, this again addressed one of the issues that came up uh, in the chat here that we found so often that members learn from members. Mm -hmm. And so maybe having uh, connections and it would be possible for Lishan or any other member just to reach out and say, I need to work with somebody who's all, 
already working with this system because I have some questions. So again, uh, we can work through this and make sure that we have connections where people are helping each other. Yeah, Tom, if I could comment on that. Don't we have something on the website where members sure. can communicate with members? Ab absolutely, Maybe. and it's, uh, it's not Maybe we very need to well. That. Sure, and you go to the website and when you look at your profile, uh, then you also can look at um, uh, the different groups that you're in. If you're in a committee, that's you cannot enter a committee because those are well-defined and they're only for committee members. But you can begin a circle, you can join right. in a circle, you can do all these types of things. So the website is set up for any form of interaction we need to have. And it's probably a good idea for us to just have a simple little tutorial that Mary and I could set up on, on how to access, uh, how to start that and how to collaborate based on the technology that's there for everybody. Dr. Fine, did you see the question in the chat related to- yes. Yeah, absolutely, Jolene. Uh, a letter or a message is going out this week to all the college uh, department chairs and the university faculty who are members of MoShape. And with that, we put out the request for student proposals, student research proposals. It's a poster session and there's judging that takes place. And this is one of the awards that's determined by the committee at the convention. And so every college and university will be notified officially about this. And this will be either tomorrow or Thursday. Excellent. So I don't see any more questions in the chat, Tom. So if you want to wrap us up and yeah, give us some parting uh, words. First of all, all of you that took place, you're all dedicated professionals. We love it. Uh, many of you have been deeply involved in the operations of Mo Aford, Mo Shape, uh, and we're forever grateful to everything that you've done. Uh, we also are happy to have so many people who uh, have not served uh, in one of the leadership capacities. And we encourage through your participation tonight to put your name in for uh, serving on a committee. Uh, we have now seven committees, eight committees, uh, and it's posted on the website what the committees are under the leadership. And for example, Brad is the chair of the member services committee. And so if you like the direction that he's going, you could just reach out and send a, a message to uh, BJ Brummel at SP or SPSmail.org and it'll get to him and he can add you to his group. The same with uh, Brandy Lynch uh, with uh, future directions and all of the other uh, committee chairs are in a position to help with this. And by the way, some of you may not be aware, but during our board meeting this June, uh, we added a new committee. Uh, and Patrick, you want to say something about, about the EDI committee and who's leading it? Yes, we, um, we well, Dennis put together a task force looking into um, EDI uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And so they spent quite a bit of time the previous year um, having discussions about that topic. And uh, we had several different board meetings that uh, it was the suggestion to make that committee a, a, a more formal committee that would have voting rights uh, for the board. So we had recently done that at our last board meeting. And uh, Sean Nevels is the chair of that committee. So I know that's a committee that there's going to be a lot of work that's going to be done moving forward. And I know there's a lot of interest in that, that if anybody uh, on this call has an interest in serving on that or knows somebody that does, either get a hold of me or somebody on the executive committee, Tom or Sean, 
and uh, we'll see if we can get you um, a part of that committee. Yes, and that's another way that uh, Mo Shape has been reacting to important issues, uh, important issues in society, important issues in our profession. And we constantly are looking for ways to be better and ways to reach more people. So you can help on the spreading of the information to others. And the last thing that I would mention, unless anyone else has comments, I want to point out almost all of you are familiar with the work of our social media committee, our, uh, our social media group, uh, our digital media. Uh, Drew Burris is joining that. Mary Dreemeyer is a part of that. Chris Daly is the chair of the Communications and Marketing Committee. Uh, Guy Danhoff, you are quite familiar with all the work that he has done and how he's projected Mo Shape into the computers of people all over the country. And so we're very proud of the great amount of work that goes into putting out information that promotes Mo Shape and all of our actions. And you'll see a lot of uh, promotion in the next few months for the convention. And so if you are not yet a part of the Mo Shape Facebook group, you can join that. Uh, if you do not have a Twitter handle yet, if you're not active in Twitter, you can start. It's very simple and join in to all the things that are going on. Uh, this committee meets every Sunday night. We plan out the schedule for what is going to be uh, projected to members. And uh, we, we lean on our executive committee to provide guidance to this as well. And so we have the schedule set up where a lot of the uh, promotion over the next couple months is going to be coming from Patrick and his committee because it's very important to promote uh, the, the convention to our members. Uh, Dennis has been very active in social media in getting nominations and uh, his, his committee has worked very hard. Yes, Dennis, you, you have done that very well. And so we have a core group of people, Anna Porcelito, uh, our president-elect, is also a part of that group. So feel free to post, retweet, like, comment, do all the things that are necessary. Yes, Dennis. I just wanted to say something about committee appointments. The president appoints people to committees and some people may not know what committee they want to serve on. They just want to find a place to serve. So they might want to contact Anna and just say, hey, I want to be on a committee. I'm just not sure what, which one, where, where do you need help? Or, and so uh, some people don't know what the committees do. And so going through Anna, who will become the president, she can appoint people and she can guide people where she knows she needs more people on which committees as other people go off. That's all I wanted to say. That, that's critically important. And again, we have so many great connections throughout the country and people are looking to us for a lot of guidance, but yet we interact. Guy was on a, a call this morning with <clears throat> the North Carolina leadership. And so we're constantly communicating across states uh, with our national office. And uh, we can only have a strong impact if you all participate. And it's done for the purpose of informing you and promoting you. And that's what we are all about. Uh, we want to make sure that you are well supported in all of your work. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, it's easy to, uh, our leadership group is listed on the website. You can feel free to contact any one of them. And with convention issues, uh, Patrick is extremely busy, but uh, he, he will attend to all of the messaging that you want because his goal is to provide the best show that we can possibly have. And so we're all working together on this. 
It's a great leadership group. I'm so happy to work for you people. And so let's make this new school year something to remember after going through a pretty difficult season. So does anyone else have any final comments that you would like to add? If not, thank you very much for participating in tonight's town hall meeting. Uh, we will continue to have events like this, Twitter chats and so forth, because it's critically important that we engage our members in productive activity. So thank you everyone for being a part and especially to Patrick, Kim, Dr. Kim Goforth and Brad Brummel for leading us through this, this great resource. Uh, take a look at it. Uh, the videos are exemplary. You will love them. Thanks everyone. And uh, Brad, if you want to stop the recording,